This is Divorce, Happy, and Successful, the number one spiritually focused self-empowerment podcast for divorced parents that's dedicated to helping you live the fulfilling life you deserve and experience the happiness you long for. Let's get into today's show with our host, W. Mark Watts. Hey, everybody, it's W. Mark Watts, and welcome back for another weekly episode of Post-Divorce Paradise. And if you listen to any of the previous episodes, you know how I like to do it. You know, I don't want to waste your time, and I definitely don't want to waste any of my time. So, as always, we're going to hop right on into it and get this party started. So, tonight's topic is something that I've been thinking about for a little while and just kind of tossing around in my mind. And so tonight I want to speak on it. And it's the fact that when I'm working with people and I'm reading uh, posts and listening or reading comments and listening to the various conversations and reading various different uh, uh, books and articles and doing research on other things, oftentimes what I come across is People who are really focusing, divorced parents who are really just focusing on their divorce as being the problem or the obstacle or the real challenge that they're experiencing in that moment or or over a long period of time, actually, which is kind of why I'm why it kind of sits a little sideways with me is because we allow this event to have such a huge effect on our lives in a negative way or a challenging way for too long a period of time. And I want to a night tonight start to have that different conversation or or invite you to look at this, your divorce in a different way from a different perspective. So instead of looking at the divorce, your divorce and, and all the things that have stemmed from that, as the obstacle, what if you thought about it as the door to your opportunity? So I want to dig into that a little bit tonight and and give you my thoughts about that. So why is that important? It's important because when you dig into it, statistics show. So this is a fact. This isn't something I'm making up. This is, is a part of my research. This is what I came across and it stunned me and startled me. And it's that it's this is this that the divorce rate for second marriages, we all know, depending on what statistic you look at from day to day, the divorce rate for first marriages is around 40, 45, 50 percent, depending on what you what you look at. Anyway, it's it's fairly high. But the divorce rate for second marriages is around 60 percent. So I want you to think about that for a minute. The divorce rate for first time marriages, let's say 45. Let's just split the difference and say 45 percent. Then the divorce rate for second marriages is 60 percent. Now, that is tremendously huge, especially for people who you would think they've been through one marriage. So they should be better in the second marriage. So when I dig it, when I dissect that statistic, and I really think about it, I realize that your first divorce, which has become this big obstacle, challenge in your life, thing that you allow to to really become a burden and hinder you from moving forward, is really you allow it to stay that instead of looking at it as an opportunity. So, What I want you to do tonight is I want you to start thinking about it a little differently. So here's what I did. And here's what I challenge the people that I talk to and that I work with to do. Your divorce should get your attention. It must get your attention because we all know it is a huge event in your life. It if it affects not only yourself, but the other person. And kids involved and family members, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, friends. So it is a total shift in your life. It's a huge event. However, if it doesn't get your attention to the point where it invites you 
to look for answers that you don't already have, then I think you allow it to hang around and become a burden and become this big obstacle and become something that you can't deal with or don't want to deal with or you have anger, et cetera, et cetera, for extended periods of time simply because you're focused on the wrong thing. Your divorce is designed to help you get the answers that you need to move to the next level of your life. So you've got to look at it in terms of do what, how do I look at, how do I learn from what happened in my marriage and how do I take that into my life going forward so that it helps me. Now, number two, your divorce should really make you want to change because Depending on, it doesn't matter which side of the fence you're on. You know, typically you're going to have the basically the two poles. You're going to have the person who uh, requests a divorce or wants out of the relationship and the person who probably doesn't want the divorce. Well, in that instance, the person who wants out really has to look at themselves, whether they do or not, and say, what did I want differently? What needed to happen differently? What must I do differently? Especially if they're moving on into a new relationship or whatever the situation is, that there's so much to be learned from what happened that you've got to look at that and say, okay, I realized it was time to move on, but I realized too, there's a lot I need to do better. I need to become better. And then you got the opposite pole because you have the people who say, well, I didn't want the divorce. I didn't do anything wrong. So, you know, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that you don't understand what the problem is. It's that if if the relationship is ended and you didn't see it coming, it totally caught you off guard. Then there were some things that were not working that you've got to identify. Maybe you were settling. Maybe you weren't paying attention. Maybe it's time for you to move forward. You secretly wanted something different, but you decided to hang around or you decided to just kind of grin and bear it, if you will. But there are things for you to learn as well and lessons for you to learn so that as you progress on in your life, now you can better recognize those things so that you don't make those same mistakes again. Maybe you don't sit and just let someone else dictate everything. Maybe you don't sit and be quiet about things when you have opinions or you have things that you think should be done a different way and you stay, you remain silent. So there's lessons for you regardless of where you sit in that spectrum of the divorce. So now you have to recognize that and say, okay, I'm not going to be that way going forward. How do I change that? Because if I don't change it, I'm just going to repeat those same patterns and those same problems are going to hinder me and I'm going to be stuck in this cycle because oftentimes we get stuck in cycles. And that is the biggest problem is to be stuck in those same cycles where you repeat patterns, you make the same mistakes, you don't learn from uh, your mistakes and you don't learn from the situations and you continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. You look up 5, 10, 15, 20 years later, and you're still getting the same results that you got uh, at this, in this present moment. We want to avoid that. Now, many times we get caught placing blame instead of receiving the blessing. And this is a huge one because I see, too, I see it too many times, people bad-mouthing the former spouse, the former spouse's family everything the former spouse did. And as long as you're stuck in that blame cycle, as long as you're stuck in that cycle where you want to be right, where the, where you want to explain things, where you're always constantly battling or constantly thinking about what the other person's doing, then you are, it's going to be very difficult for you to receive the blessing because I'm a firm believer that in everything in life, there is a blessing. There's a lesson and a blessing. And once that relationship is over, you have to realize at some point that, okay, it's time for me to move on. And what else, what else am I moving forward to? What am I looking forward to? What, why was I taking 
from that relationship? Why was it removed? Why, why did that thing end? And I have to believe that there's something else out there for you, something better that you're supposed to move on to. And yeah, it gets hard. It's sometimes hard in the beginning uh, because there's, of course, there's a lot of things you don't understand. And quite honestly, we're not taught and, you know, really equipped to to handle those types of relationships where the emotional ties are so strong. But those are all, all things that you can learn. And you can get help and assistance with and that you can overcome. So I I, if there's one thing that you take from this call tonight is, you know, stop looking at the blame and start looking for the blessings, because in anything in life, you get what you look for, what you expect. So if you start looking for the blessings and so directly so that. Ask for what is the blessing. Talk with yourself. Have that conversation, whether you do it mentally or out loud, but ask for the blessings. Hey, what is the blessing in this situation? What could my blessing be? I'm looking for you blessing. And believe it or not, if you ask that question enough and you get your mindset focused on the blessings, you'll start to realize them. They'll start to really present themselves And then now, as you start to get the picture, you are really more likely and more willing and more able to start to move forward and appreciate those blessings and move forward and step, take those steps in your life that really that your life is really calling you to move and step into. And then lastly, you know, it is really difficult, you know, just to piggyback on the whole blessing thing. Oftentimes there are things that are are attempting to get to you or attempting to reach you. And in order for you to receive them, you know, think of I'm I'm a huge sports fan. So if you're attempting to catch a football or if you're attempting to shoot a basketball or, or or hit a baseball or catch a baseball, I should say, it's very difficult if you already have a baseball in your hand or a basketball in your hand or a football in your hand. So if you're constantly grasping and holding on to that relationship for dear life, when it's clearly over and it's broken and it's time to release it, then there's no way you can catch what's coming into your life. We're always, 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 things are always coming into our lives. There's always change. There's always things that are happening. But if we're focused on something that's over, something that has has run its course. If we're gripping down on that that relationship, that person, those thoughts, placing blame, then how can you receive the new? How can you receive what's attempting to get to you? You're not even looking for it because we all know it's very difficult to catch a pass if you're not looking in that direction. So I invite you just to look in a different direction, release that grip on those thoughts those people, those ideas, and start to cultivate new ideas surrounded by what's what's available to come to me now, what can come to me as opposed to what has happened to me in the past. So we have to turn our focus toward the future and release the past because this moment that we have right now is filled with so much opportunity that we've really got to open ourselves up to it and allow those blessings and those new thoughts and the new things, uh, whether they be the new you, whether it be other people, whether it be other opportunities, money, jobs, a new home, just a new way of thinking, whatever that newness is, Allow it to come into your life because it's there and it's always looking for you. All right. So that's all I could really talk about this for quite some time. But, you know, I like to keep them fairly quick so you can get into them and get out. I invite you to listen to this more than one time. Also, if you know of anyone that you think this might help, please share it with them. Uh, Invite them to the podcast. Uh, And as always, there's plenty of other episodes. So, Take a peek if you're new here. Listen to some of the other episodes. Hopefully they'll serve you as well. It is my 
utmost pleasure. And uh, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to chat with you guys every week. And it is really a privilege for me to be here. So until next week, take care of yourself. Look for those blessings. Your divorce is not the obstacle. It's your door. It's the door to your opportunity. Take that and, and really make it your own. And as always, continue to fight to move forward toward your own post-divorce paradise. Uh, see you next week. Take care, everybody. You've been listening to the Divorce Happy and Successful Podcast. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Until next time, stay focused and keep moving forward.